morning, good afternoon, um, wherever you are, wherever you happen to be listening from. I am so excited to welcome to the show Carrie Reynolds. She is the owner of Allen Galvez Insurance. She is an Ohio native. Um, yes. So uh, are you an Ohio State fan? Um, for the purposes of this uh, broadcast, I'll say yes. Because if you say no, they like tell you to move. So <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's pretty serious. Ohio State oh, is a religion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. They're pretty serious about that stuff. So I'm, I'm a Nebraska fan. So mm-hmm. there's usually, there's a little tension, except <laughs> one of these days I'm hoping we like score against Ohio. We'll see if that ever happens. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have you on the show today. We've, we've interacted a few times, a lot more on social, mm-hmm. a couple times in person. I was excited to see you in San Diego in January. Um, so I'm looking forward to digging into that experience a little bit. Um, but how is everything going? How are you doing? Um, how's the family? How, how's everybody holding up? That's a big question. So that could actually take up this entire time, right? But I'll try to condense it for you. Um, so obviously, since we're recording all of this during the, the epidemic that we have going on now, uh, I can say that everybody's holding up pretty okay, right? Because it's, it's just a, it's a difficult time, and it's difficult for everybody, regardless of who you are. So we talked about this actually before we start, we hopped on the podcast here, but I've discovered that leading through a crisis uh, makes you really brush up on your skills Mm -hmm. as a leader. Yeah. I've, I've had to learn how to be positive, how to be motivating, even if I don't feel it. And that's really, really, really hard. I've had to learn how to make decisions quickly, how to pivot and change, yeah. uh, how to adapt, how to, uh, I mean, my goodness, every, everything, everything that you often get a chance to think about uh, in a less compressed amount of time, you're doing, you're, I mean, you're doing it now. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how, how do we keep business rolling in? How do we, adjust our operations to meet the customer's needs. And then, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's extraordinarily difficult. Um, couple that with the fact that I have two kids, thankfully they're older, but they're in school. And so not only do I have to try to do all that stuff at my office and, you know, besides dealing with the epidemic and, and being, you know, making operational changes and being a leader, and and still doing marketing, writing some policies from time to time, taking care of my normal everyday things. Then in the evening, I get to go home and try to do the teacher thing, Mm -hmm. which I certainly did not get a college degree for. (laughs) And there's a reason that I didn't because I don't have the patience or the tolerance for it, but it doesn't matter. So, you know, all of those stresses, I mean, my heavens, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. But I will say on a positive note, we, we're all, you know, whether it's at the office or whether it's at home, we're, we're all holding up pretty good. We yeah. try to give each other some grace. We try to be understanding. We, you know, I'm here if people need to talk to me or if they need to bounce ideas off of me or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, we're all doing the best that we can under the circumstances. And heaven knows that that's all you can do, Right. Absolutely. There's no option. There's no yeah. option. And some, some days, you know, best is different than the next day. And right. I, that's probably been the biggest lesson that I've learned that oh. 80% one day is a hundred percent the next day. Right. Like it's just it, the feelings around it, all the emotions vary oh. from day to day, the, you know, what stress, you know, what thing might hit your inbox or whatever concern or, um, your kids behavior on a given day now that we're all just like hanging out in the same mm-hmm. space all day long. Um, mm-hmm. it's certainly understandable that, I mean, kids are building a tolerance, I think, but they right. also may be running out of that tolerance as well. So we all are. yeah. I mean, so how, how old are your kids? 
Uh, my daughter is 13, okay. which let me tell you is a really fun age to be quarantined with. <laughs> I have a 13 year old boy. I totally get it. So I, I, I have to laugh a little bit because we have the attitude anyway. I mean, that's being a teenager. We were all teenage te teenagers at one time. Okay. But just multiply that by like a bazillion and you'll understand how difficult that is, especially when she got mad at me. And she almost like blamed the whole thing on me. I'm like, really? Really? Because that's exactly what I wanted to do for the next six months because I had nothing better to do. So that's, that's, that just, that's been really hard. My nine year old son, boys are definitely more, um, uh, I don't know, easygoing. Yeah. So thankfully, thankfully, he's pretty much rolled with a lot of it. He doesn't give me a whole lot of grief, which I'm grateful for because I get enough from his sister. <laughs> so, um, so it's been, uh, but I'll also say this. I've had, especially with her, and this actually just happened yesterday. I've had some more insightful, meaningful conversations with her mm -hmm. than I've ever had in the past. Yep. And for that, I'm grateful because uh, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And we have certainly experienced the same thing at our house. I know more about my kids now than I feel mm -hmm. like I ever did. Like in the first, like than I knew about them in the 13 years that I've been raising my mm -hmm. oldest, you know, like, I'm like, how did I not know this about you? How did I, mm -hmm. like, what did, it was some, it was some food preference that we were talking about the other day. And I was like, how did I not know this? Like, I've been cooking for you for 13 years. Mm -hmm how did I not know that this is the way that you, you know, like to serve? I don't even remember what it was yeah, now, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, we're, we're learning more about each other. My kids are just learning to be more patient with one another. Mm. Again, we're, we're reaching the point where we maybe have peaked on what they're willing to give on that level. But, um, but yeah, I think they're just learning to interact with each other a little bit more. And, you know, cause I think about being, I was one of six, and we didn't, we didn't really have to learn how to hang out with one another until we were like, you know, getting into our thirties. And then we were like, oh, maybe you are okay. And I can mm -hmm. hang out with you. Mm -hmm. um, I think my kids are learning how to hang out and entertain one another. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, I guess we can yeah. all watch each other's movies and we don't need to be in separate rooms all the time. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully, you know, seeing that they've um, built stronger bonds in a, obviously a very, you know, weird situation, but, um, but yeah, it, it certainly has forced us to, um, just rearrange and reassess relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Just, yeah. There's been no way around it, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. There are days that I'm certainly kind of like, kids go outside. We do not need to be together right now. And, uh, but also like, uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm watching them grow up a lot more closely than I was going to get to. So yeah. Yeah. So there's, there, yeah. there are, there are, there are positives, yeah. but you do have to look kind of hard to see them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it takes a lot of intention. Yeah. Some oh, days more than others. Isn't that the truth? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, but everybody stayed healthy. Yes, we're good. Yeah, which is which is great considering yep. not everybody's in that same boat. So correct. Well, yeah. Correct. Well, I hope I hope the schooling continues to go well for as long as that has to endure. But yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm assuming my kids are learning something. I would. I don't even know how to test them. So we're all just doing the best that we can. Yes. Yes. And that that that's been my mantra for actually quite some time it's even more important now. Yeah. You know, you just, you know, if it's the minimum, it's the minimum. If that's what you can do today, then that's what you can do. Yeah. And just go easy on yourself. Give yourself some grace. Try to do some things that do bring you joy, whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you can do within a contained space, whether that's read or write or do a puzzle or something, anything to just, um, because it'll, it'll suck you in and it'll mess with your head and you'll just become a very nasty, hateful, unhappy person. Yeah. And I don't think that's good for anybody. So you've got to try to, to, to broaden the horizon somehow to give you something that makes you 
joyful in the midst of all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I see, I see that you've been, you've been getting back to some baking. Um, I had a two month hiatus where I did not have my stand mixer. It was being repaired. And I, I kid you not the, the, the weekend when they put the stay at home order in place was the same weekend that my mixer was shipped back to me. Yeah. I said, Hmm, that must be fate. I baked 16 dozen cookies that weekend. And I also baked, I didn't eat them all because that's a bad thing, but I gave them out to people too, yeah. you know, just to, you know, hear something to, yeah. you know, pep you up, make you feel a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and so baking actually gives me that, like I was saying, something that brings me joy yeah. and it even brings me more joy if I can give it to other people so then they can enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I've uh, gotten back into, I love my baking. It's so much fun. Um, so yeah, that's helped. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, we just, we're all going to find new coping mechanisms and um, yeah. So I don't know. We're getting more creative. We're having to oh boy. examine ourselves a, quite a bit more than, than we had to um, because we were so busy before. And now that we aren't busy now, it's just, there's certain things that are taken away and forcing us to look at life a different way than, Correct. than yeah. we had to before. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So in terms of, in terms of work, like, so we were talking about this a little bit before we hopped on the podcast. Um, you're owning an agency, you're running it kind of pivoting operations, getting creative, mm -hmm. trying to do new things, trying to continue bringing new business in the doors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did you always intend to get into insurance? Was this, you know, part of where you, your dad owned the agency. So mm -hmm. is this, this was part of your natural career path or did you resist it at first? No. You know, if you, if you ask most people that are in this industry, especially if it's a family business, mm -hmm. they're going to say that they never once intended to be in the, they, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work out that way. You don't, you don't go to a career day when you're a kid and there's an insurance agent there talking about how this was their lifelong dream because it just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. So I grew up in the industry like many people do, but I never ever considered being in it. I, it was just always around me, but it was never like my career intention. Yeah. I wanted to be a marine biologist when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Um, I also wanted to go to New York and live in a loft. Oh, not today, but, uh, but I mean, you know, I never, I always thought of insurance as, eh, that's boring. That's dry. That's not for me. That's not whatever. It's what like the rest of the population thinks anyway. I kind of felt that way. And, uh, so, you know, I went through school, I graduated, went off to college, got a business degree and it was the, um, that I graduated in May. It was, it was in April. So literally a month before I graduated, I did not have a job. Mm. And I knew that my parents would not be pleased by that. Okay. Cause they were, they made it very, very clear. We're not supporting you. You know, you're, this is it. And I, I called my dad. I called him at the office one morning. I was sobbing and I said, I don't have a job. And my dad, he's very calming and relaxing and very good with people. And, and he said, you know what, Carrie, come to the office and work. And if you, even if you don't end up liking it, you'll gotten some uh, experience to put on a resume. And then if you do like it, then all the better. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, he never ever once said how much he wanted me to come work at the office. He never pressured me. He never said a darn thing. So I said, well, that sounds like a, okay. You know, I was like, why not? You know, so I'll move back home and work in the office. And um, that was in 1996. And so, you know, you could do the math. Yeah. Obviously, it worked out. <laughs> I started in the office. I didn't have a license. For the first year, I did the marketing. So I, like, did customer surveys. Um, it, was, it was different back then. So the things that I did marketing-wise are not the same things I do today because the technology wasn't available. Right. So, you know, I sent out like paper surveys and people filled them out and returned them um, and kind of did a study of customer satisfaction and then created, you know, some print ads and, and radio ads and just a variety of things, which was a really a good way to cut my teeth on it, to be honest with you, because yeah. marketing is something I absolutely love. Uh, and so I did that. Then I went and got my life and health license and then I was able to jump into that piece. Then I got my PNC license. And so then I was able to go do the whole you know, quoting, selling, et cetera. And I did that. I, well, I still do it, 
but I got a couple ladies here in the office last spring, so about a year ago, and once they were all up and running and trained and feeling pretty confident, I said, ladies, I'm going to turn personal lines over to you. Okay. You're going to do the quoting. You're going to do the selling. I said, that frees me up to do the things I should be doing, which is commercial lines, which is life insurance, which is Medicare supplements, running this place, doing the marketing and the 800 other things that I have to do every day that I, I need to, I do need to free up that time. So it was a win for them because they loved it. They get extra opportunities. They get more money in their pocket. It takes something away from me that I'm not a fan of. I don't much care for personal lines. It's been good to me. Don't get me wrong. It just isn't my jam. Okay. Yeah. And so then it frees up that time to allow me to do things that bring me joy. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's creating that email campaign or whatever, it doesn't matter. So, so that's in that amount of time I've transitioned from that very beginning to here now. And in somewhere in the middle of all of it, I became co-owner with dad. Then last year I became full owner, hundred percent. Um, so it's been quite the transition over all of those years. It's been a good one. I'm, I'm not going to complain, but I will say transitioning to the, being the owner and the manager and the leader is a difficult transition on its own because suddenly you're the manager and owner of people that you might've been employee at a fellow employee. Yeah. With. Yeah. So that's a whole other conversation there. Some of my former staff had some issues with that. Yeah, I mean, they're no longer with me for their own choices, but it was good that when these these two agents came in, um, I was already the boss. Yeah, okay, because yeah. it didn't have that extra layer of politics in it. Uh, but yeah, so I learn about myself every day. I read a lot of leadership uh, books, and I, I, you know, I do what I can to help develop those skills because that's different all on its own. Yeah. So that's, that's been my trend. That's been my start. And then kind of all the transition up until today and next, next month or June, I celebrate. That's when I started here at the office. So good grief. That's hard to believe. Where does that time go? But that's kind of my story. Yeah. And, and time never slows down, even though it, it does kind of feel like it's moving slower right now as we wait for things to change and go back to normal. It really doesn't ever slow down. For me, it's still like marking points in time by my kids' ages. Mm -hmm. that's, kind of, that's how I know when things happened in my life. Otherwise, I'm like, uh, I don't remember when that was. And then I right. like, and go, oh right, my God, right, right, how, right. yeah, how, how do you like, all of a sudden you're at, you know, 24, 25 years of, of doing something. And <laughs> yeah. And, and how much the industry has changed and grown in that time. Oh, oh my gosh. We don't even have enough time to talk I about know. that. It's, it's really unbelievable. And and even in just the past couple months, how that's really ramped up. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, you know, for obvious reasons here, being in the middle of this pandemic. So um, I've seen so much, so much, so much has changed in whether it's processes or technology or the marketplace in general. You know what? The thing about this industry is you learn every single day. It can change every single day and you can learn something new every single day. So I think that's why I've never really gotten tired of it Yeah, because insurance is far from boring. Right. And it, it, there is something that you will learn that is new. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's inevitable. It may not be every day, but I bet you once a week. Oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's endless. In fact, I, I was, it is, it really it is. Yeah. And sometimes that can overwhelm me because I'm like, I can't keep up. Okay? Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden you're like, ah, you know, but you can't do all the things. Okay. You right. got to pick the things that are going to work for you, but it can, it can certainly be overwhelming. So, you know, the industry has been good to me. I'm grateful. It's, I think it's one of the best industries in the world. Absolutely. Um, the journey's been, uh, it's been entertaining. It's been interesting. It's been a ton of different things. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Yeah. So, um, when you, what have you guys had to do in order to just, you know, adapt the business to everything that's going on? I mean, if you had to sum it up in, in a couple of minutes, what, what have been your big, your big strategies? I mean, are like, are your employees in the office? Are they, are they working? So, okay. So in, in this instance, I have a, this, the building that I'm in is a big building. It's a okay. long building. Okay. I only, besides myself, I have two full-time agents and then my dad comes in here on a part-time basis to do Medicare supplements. So 
we are totally okay as the layout is to just be in this office. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I'm, I'm grateful for that for a couple of reasons. I'm grateful because a, it lends a strength of normality to our day mm -hmm. because I get up, I do my thing, I get ready, I drive to the office. Okay. Then I'm at the office. I do my, you know, eight hours or whatever it is. And then I go back home. So that's been kind of a saving grace for me. It, 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 it's good for your head. Um, secondly, it's a good thing that we could stay here because I wasn't quite equipped for a remote setup. Yeah. Okay. So that was like, Oh, what am I going to do? That was a lot of stress for me. So luckily that was, that was not an issue. Um, so we're here, we're close to walk in traffic. Okay. We did that a month ago and uh, I, I made sure to send out uh, correspondence to customers, letting them know what was going on. I think that's really important at a time like this. You need to communicate with your customers and tell them, okay, here's what's happening. Here's what, here's how we're going to respond to it. Okay. Here's all of these ways that you can get us, even though you can't come into the office, you can still find us. You can communicate with us. We've got texting, we've got email, we've got phone and you, and you know, here's, here's the information on our website, how you can make a payment. Okay. To the carrier or how you can do this or how you can do that. Yes. Communication is key. Yep. So luckily we were doing e-signatures. So that hasn't changed. We had that technology. So where we didn't have to get, the signature in person. All right. Uh, we've pivoted, you know, it's funny. I, I wouldn't say that we've had to make a ton of ad adaptations only because we had some things in place, uh, exclusive of remote where we could still do business as usual. Okay. I mean, for those people that we needed a wet signature for, we popped it in the mail, sent it to them. They mailed it back to us. That, that's old school. It worked 20 years ago. It works today. Right. I mean, right. it does. We've had to take people have we've taped some things to the door. They've taken it out of an envelope. They've done something. They put it back in. Yeah. It, most people luckily, and, and hopefully it's most people, maybe it's our customers. I don't know. Have been, have been willing to adapt along with us because yeah. yeah. you really don't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, you know, sorry, you're not coming in my office. And, and most of them are, don't want to anyway, because they just don't know. They have no idea. So it's been, I mean, there's still a lot for me to learn. I get it. But I think we've done a pretty decent job of communicating to the customers what the changes are and, and, and having some technology in place where we could communicate and we could, uh, it's, I'm, I'm grateful that it's been okay. Now that being said, what have I been doing in the past six weeks or so? I have been working on getting certain things in place. So should we have to be remote at any time in the future or someone would have to do an on demand situation, we are able to do it without losing a beat yeah. because I knew that was in the back of my mind to do, but this really sped up that timeline. I didn't have a choice. So I've been working on those kinds of operations things. Yeah. in the background as well. So eventually we'll be, you know, before the end of the year, we'll be at a comfortable spot where we can do that if we, if we have to. Yeah. Um, so like I said, luckily it's been pretty okay. What's going to be the challenges is now I have to kind of figure out over the next several months, how I'm going to keep doing all of that mm -hmm. because things are going to start to reopen here soon based on um, governor's orders, et cetera. And I've had to now go, okay, what, in order to reopen to the public, what do we have to do? You know, can I, is it practical? Is it feasible? Right. Uh, and if I can't, then I need to communicate to the customers, you know, so I'm, I'm working on an email. I was before we hopped on this to kind of communicate that stuff. You know, we used to do Medicare supplement appointments in person in the office. Well, I had to talk to my dad today and say, we can't do that. You right. know, start thinking of a plan you know, maybe you can meet people in a location. Um, I don't know, you know, or maybe we just, if you're not comfortable with some of the technology, maybe we're going to have to just temporarily, temporarily halt it. I hate to do that. I don't want to say no to business, but we just have to do what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, if we, if we didn't know this before, it's become extremely clear now that life is a constant adaptation process. Mm -hmm. You just had to do it so much faster. Oh my! Than, than we ever had to before. <laughs> I but recommend it. 
but yeah, I mean, it's like, there are certain things I think, and, and I'm speaking for myself, but hopefully this makes sense to other people that were part, it was part of our life. And we were just like, no, this is the way it has to be done. This is the way it has to be. This is the way I like it. Dot, dot, dot. And you had to let that stuff go. We've all had to let certain things that we felt so committed to, um, mm -hmm. like, like we were just so strict about it. And now it's like, okay, no. maybe that's less important. Correct. And you go to the goal, like this is the goal. And then you work backwards from there. This is how we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. And everybody has had to adjust their thinking, but it's like, it is, it's a daily process. We don't, we don't get to stop doing that. And I don't think that that's going to change even when I don't think so crisis either. is over, I think, but hopefully we've become more mentally equipped to be able to do that the way that we need to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like the emphasis on technology, it's so much more critical now than it ever was before. Um, who knew that Zoom was going to become the absolute most important, you know, like software that, you know, we have access to. It's just, it, it, it's so crazy to think Silly me that I didn't buy stock in the company months ago. No, I know. I feel like that's a, that's that's. I would, I would have sold this place and been sitting out in, in Aruba on a beach somewhere. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You'd be buying your own island. Oh yeah, right. Um, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's. It, it, but it, I think it's. It, it's just one of those things that we're just we're going to learn what real flexibility is. Mm -hmm. Well, and one other thing too, uh, and I, well, we can talk about it, or we can't. It doesn't matter. Uh, but once we've hit this point, especially with technology, agents need to realize that we're not going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. So if our customer is used to X, Y, Z, then X, Y, Z becomes the norm. Yep. Okay. Yep. The so story. those people that aren't willing to continue doing certain things are really going to be the ones that suffer. I truly, in my heart of hearts, believe that yep. we've reached a point where you don't turn back. Yeah. You know, here it is. This is our minimum expectation and we need to continue it. Yep. And, and I think, I think it'll be interesting to just watch over the next several months. What really does happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I it'll just be a very interesting, uh, exercise yeah. to watch it. I mean, yeah. there's just, there's nothing else to say about that. Yeah, it's a right do or die right. moment in some instances. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you will see the agencies that weren't able to pivot. I, I just think it'll be very difficult for them to come back from something like this. And, and, and it makes me sad at the same well, time. Sure. Me too. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think being able to just kind of think on your feet a little, a little bit more because if, you know, if you were just like so committed to the old way of doing things, it's just not even an option, <laughs> you know, in, in any way of life, in, no, in, like, any aspect, in whether it's work or home or whatever, or just like, getting food on the table is a different uh -huh. process now. Just Before all of this, I had never ordered groceries and had them delivered to my house. You know what? I'm probably never going to go back. Oh, I will never go. Well, actually, I'm we have to wait so long that by the time I go to place the order, I have to wait two days and I'm like, I'm just going to have to go to the store. So hey. I've actually gone backwards on that thing, but I also only go and get like five things. Like I'm not going and buying you know, two hundred dollars worth. It's like, oh, we're getting the basic necessities. It's, I mean, it's changed the way that we eat at our house. It's so, it's, it's so weird. Plus, now we're growing food, which I said I was not doing this year, but that's, that's like a completely different conversation as well. So, um, but yeah. So, um, I want to ask you a couple of questions, and this can be like whether it's work related or from you know your personal experience, but. Um, what have been some, like, what is one of the biggest life lessons that you've learned? Um, you know, whether it applies to your career or just like something that you would feel like would be helpful to somebody else. Well, so what I have learned over the past couple of years, and it's only been in the past couple of years because of some life situations and it's actually very applicable right now. So it's kind of funny how that kind of comes together. Mm -hmm. What I have learned is that in life, you will encounter some very difficult things, okay? Some things that are going to knock you down, that are going to totally change your world. And you have two choices. You either run through it or you fall down and you give up. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to do the latter. Yeah, I refuse. 
I have a lot of living to do in my life and I'm not done yet. Yeah. So I will never make that choice. I'm not saying I don't have moments where <laughs> you want to, of right. course, but I just, I won't, I refuse. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. Yeah. Cause there's too many good things that are around the corner that you're going to miss. Yeah. You almost had me tearing up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wow. Well, and I'm not going to get into the details, Yeah. but starting in 2018 and even up through all of this, I've gone through some of the most God awful life situations in my, in my entire 46 years of existence. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've learned. Yeah. You know, you, you have, you have two choices and I want you to pick the one where you don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. Because people are counting on you and you know, whether that's your family, whether that's your workplace, whether that's, um, other people in the industry, as an example, I mean, people are counting on you and you need to count on yourself. Yeah. So that's the biggest life lesson I've learned. And yeah. I take that to heart every single day. I just, so, oh, I, I refuse. I so refuse. Carrie's not wearing, waving the white flag. Huh? You're not waving the white flag. I, no, I refuse to wave the white flag. Now, that's not to say I don't ask for help, okay? Right, So right. I guess white flag is in popular languages, give up, right? The surrender right. flag. The surrender okay. flag. Right. So I won't surrender, but I also will ask for help. Yeah. Okay, so I've also learned that I'm not too proud to ask for help, yeah. okay? Yeah. I don't know it all. The minute I think I know it all, I might as well just retire from everything because you're always learning. There's always opportunity. There's always other things. And I, uh, so I do know to ask for help and I do it on a regular basis yeah. I just do it today. So, but I will not surrender. I will yeah. not do it. Yeah. There's too many good things around the corner. I know there are. Yeah. You know, this is a season. Yeah. You know, any bad thing in your life is a season. It does not last forever. Right. It doesn't, but we have to be able to recognize that and go, okay, this is pretty crappy. All right, let's, you know, what are, what are we going to do? How are we going to move through this? That being said, I also suggest that if you need professional help with that, that you seek it. It is not, you are not weak to ask for somebody to listen to you and help guide you through the process. Absolutely. And that as well. So, and some, and I'm, especially at times like this, it's even more important, right? Absolutely. So no, I will not wave that white flag. I won't do it. I love it. I love it. So when it comes to people that have had an impact on your life, like who, who has either helped you along professionally, personally, like those, those mentors, those people that you've counted on, um, you know, who, you know, do you have a, do you have like that go-to person or persons in your life? Well, um, so my dad is still probably the, the, the number one person I will go to. Okay. Because you know, he's been in the business. He started in 1971. He's going to celebrate 50 wow. years in insurance next year. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's amazing. Crazy. I think he'll retire full time. He said he wanted to reach 50 years and then, you know, uh, which is <laughs> please by all means, you know, you're not going to get an argument from me, but because of his breadth of experience, because of, you know, starting his own agency and running the agency, he is still a wealth of information for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he may not be up to date with technology, blah, 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 but on the basic things of, you know, how do I address the situation or, or I'm kind of struggling with this, you know, what are your thoughts on it? You know, just based on your experience, he is still the person I will go to without hesitation, you know, cause I can speak frankly too, which is helpful. Yeah. So he, again, he's, he's the first person that I go to. I, there, a friend of mine, uh, you know, Tracy, don't you? Tracy. Cotton? Oh, yes. So we, we've known each other virtually for a long time through social media, et cetera. Two years ago, we finally met in person. I flew to her house and we hung out for a weekend. And since that time we have become extraordinarily close and I look to her as well for perspective on insurance or life things. Yeah. Okay. Cause we're roughly the same age. We're, we're both in similar life circumstances. Um, we're both in the industry. We're both female. I mean, there's just so many things that I can go to her and ask for her advice on. 
Yeah. So she has become a huge influence for me as well. We just had a really good time together. Um, she's a dear friend of mine. Uh, luckily, there are, I have a lot of people in the industry that I can call upon if I need to, mm -hmm. you know, for help or for advice. I have a lot of friends in the industry and I'm grateful. I know a lot of people. I'm not bragging, but I just, because of my, you know, social media activity, speaking engagements, uh, my writing, my, oh my heavens, you know, these kinds of things. Yep. I've been able to develop such a nice group of people that I can contact if I need to on an as needed basis. You know, Claudia McLean's one, she is my idol. Oh, she's my hero. I, I admire her like you don't even know. And so on email campaigns, because we use the same platform, I'll go to her for some help. She will gratefully and, and graciously share her content with me. Yeah. And so I have no problem reaching out to her. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that I can luckily, you know, but I would say those two that I named first are the ones that, that, that are my go-tos. Yeah. Because we just have that relationship where it's, I can say whatever and it's okay. You know, there's just, it's judgment free. It's good. And, and so I'm grateful. That I have so many people yeah. that I can go to at any, at any time, quite honestly, because I'm, I'm, I try to be a giver in return. I share content. I do, you know, in the IAOA group, I try to put out words of wisdom or, or here's some things I'm doing that you might find helpful, or here's a piece of advice, or here's this. So I try to reciprocate, obviously. So when you reciprocate, right, then, then people are more inclined to, you know, that back and yep. forth. Um, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta give what you get, as they yep. say. Yeah. So that's kind of, those are kind of my, that's kind of my go-to resource. Yeah. And I think obviously we all need those people in our life. We can, you almost can't have too many of them. I agree with you. And um, I think that's one of the things that has always just, I think that's what made me fall in love with the insurance industry first was just seeing the power of relationships and not, not like that they were going to, these relationships were going to take me somewhere, but like, I felt like such a connection with these people. Mm -hmm. Um, that like, it just, it, it just sucked me in. Um, and I, and I love seeing like just the generosity that goes on in terms of we share ideas, we share thoughts, we share insight. It's not like these are my trade secrets and I'm not going to tell you how I do things. It's just this giving community that supports one another. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, I think we have like that healthy competition view, like absolutely, we, we may even be in this, in the same geographic area. That doesn't mean I'm not going to help you out when you're struggling. And I think that that's, it's, it's a beautiful community. I absolutely, absolutely. love it. And, I, and it brought us together. So I mean, mm -hmm. I, what gets better than that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I want to circle back to IAOA. So I saw you in San Diego. Uh huh. Okay. And I don't remember if I saw you right before or right after you got off stage. I want to say it was right after. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it was just, it was such a brief encounter. So how, how was that experience? How, like, it's a, it's a big group. Okay. So let me tell you, that was hands down my most favorite. Now I've, I've only done like three, I think three other speaking engagements. I never had so much fun as at that. I only had 20 minutes and, but I, that is my jam. That is my jam. When I can get up and talk to people and share valuable information and enjoy every single minute of it, that is me and my element. So I get on that stage. I'm nervous beforehand. Everybody is. Right. But when I'm there, I'm there. Yeah. And I absolutely loved every minute. I was so honored to, to be asked. And it was just, I got goosebumps talking about it. It was so much fun. Yeah. I had so much fun on that stage and, and people could tell, Yeah, you know, people could tell. Did you see it? Did you see me speak or no? No, I was out in the hallway. So okay. I, you know, now I am on the, on the vendor side. I don't go in the room. Yeah. Okay. So. Fair enough. Okay. I just didn't know. But anyway, so I, I, I was totally in my element. Yeah. That was my stage and, the, and we were going to have fun and we did. And so yeah, that's the biggest audience I've ever spoken to. Um, but very well received. And, uh, what's funny about that 
I presented on something that I knew that I knew was helpful. I didn't know how helpful it was going to be because leg- I, I sat down and my phone blew up. People were messaging me. They were emailing me. They were like, can I get a copy of the presentation? Can we talk about this more? I couldn't keep up with the amount of stuff that people were asking. Wow. I just, I thought, well, isn't this stuff obvious? You you know, for me, I was like, this is a real basic concept that I'm talking about. And I'm saying, okay, here's my examples of what I've done, blah, blah, blah. And I just couldn't get over the response to that. It blew me away. So to me, that's gratifying because I shared something that was of value. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't theory. It was here. Here's, here's my concept. Here's what I've done in my office. Here's all the examples, you know, steal them, take them. I don't care. Right. Adapt them for your own needs. And it was, it was off the hook. I just, whoa, <laughs> I didn't, I, I honestly wasn't prepared for that kind of a response. I just wasn't. And, um, it, it's, it's taken me a long time to get off that high. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I came back and crashed and it, that wasn't really pleasant because if I could speak all the time to groups, I would. Yeah. Because I want to try to, to bring value, to motivate, to, to feed off that energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a great feeling. That's yeah. a great feeling. Oh, yeah. And it was just plain fun. Yeah. So much fun. I felt like a rock star up there with my little headset, little, you know, thing going on. I was like, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty epic. I have to say. Um, yeah. It was a good, it was good stuff. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm excited that that was your experience. I mean, it seems from the outside looking in, it seems a little scary. But, um, but I'm, I'm glad that it was a good experience for you. And I think it's amazing how you think that you're, you're like, everybody knows this, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. And then people are like, I didn't know this. I had no idea. You're bringing so much value. You're building powerful connections. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And you're, you're giving back to a wonderful community. So yeah, that's, that's the other thing. I'm like, these people are, these are pretty awesome people in general. So I was really, really, uh, aware that I needed to bring something good. You know, you had to bring your A game. Uh, it was just very, very important for me to do that. Um, of the people in that group are very, uh, important to me. I respect so many and, uh, I just, I just needed to do the best that I could. And I was absolutely, and of course I prepared for 20 minutes. I prepared for probably eight to 10 hours. Okay. So for anybody that wants to get into public speaking, Please note that the amount of preparation far exceeds the actual length of the presentation. <laughs> but I did that again for a reason to to make sure I brought the the best uh, um, you know talk that I could. So yeah, that was wicked fun, wicked fun. I would have stood up there forever, and we could have just had a great time. Yeah, uh, I'm hopeful to do more in the future. I mean, not like every month, like some people, but I would. I've got several good presentations I would love to bring to like, you know, PIA events or big eye events or who I don't, you know, whatever, something that's insurance related. Yeah. So, you know, maybe someone will see this and say, I'm going to hire her. That'd be awesome. Cause yep. you know, I've done, I've done a pretty decent job and, and people seem to get a lot out of it. Um, and I'd like to do more of that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that, that answers our, our question of, uh, what does Carrie want to do in the future? So, ah. I, yeah, so I, but I have two other quick questions. So okay. if you could go back and give your younger self advice, what would you say? What would you tell your younger self? I mean, about insurance or about anything, about anything. So life doesn't owe you anything. Mm. You got to earn it. Okay. Life doesn't owe you a darn thing. Um, that's something. And not every situation is a catastrophe. Okay. We have to kind of, we have to kind of look at things and judge the level of severity, I guess. When you're younger, everything's a hot mess, right? But it isn't always true as we get older. Okay. Uh, let me think of some other advice I'd give myself. Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. That per that perspective aspect of like growing yeah. up is, pretty powerful. I think well, because there's no substitute for going through it. Okay. But so anyway, but we're saying, okay, if I could tell myself, then that's what we're going to do. Uh, what else? Um, that 
that not everything, you're not going to like everything that you have to do in life, but you got to do it anyway. <laughs> these, are, these are all very good pieces of advice. I'm well, because my kids don't get them. it. They're like, eh, I just don't like that. So I'm just not going to do it. I'm like, you know what? If you do that at a job, they're going to fire you. Yeah. Okay. So you have to learn how to make the best of it and get through it. And then maybe you move on to something that you do like more. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, there's stuff I do every day that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Tough. Too bad. Yeah. You're an adult and you need to do it. And, and that's, that's a hard, that's a hard lesson. That's to learn. a hard lesson. For that's sure. a really hard lesson to learn. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm trying to think of my words of wisdom here. Um, cause I didn't know anything when I was 18 or 20 or even when I graduated, I didn't know. Oh my gosh. I was so clueless. Um, uh, you know, you also have to learn how to be responsible. Okay. Because mommy and daddy aren't going to take care of you forever. You know, you need to learn how to be financially responsible. You need to learn how to, uh, take, you know, responsibility of your calendar, uh, responding to people. I see a lot of things that are somewhat upsetting in that regard. And I'm like, you know what? It's all you. Yeah. You got to do it. Yeah. You no, know, you need to pick up the phone and call that person. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know, you're in charge of your finances. You know, you got to kind of get it, get it together here, folks. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just something else I would probably say too. And the earlier that you learn that, the better. Yeah. Okay. Because you don't want to be learning that stuff when you're 40. Cause it's really hard to change your ways. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That might be the, that might be the, the biggest, besides the lesson I said earlier about sometimes life is going to deal you a crappy hand. Yeah. And you have to learn how to deal with that. Yeah. You know, that's, that is the, still the biggest lesson that I've learned. You need to understand how to pivot through that, work through that, um, and, and overcome it. Mm -hmm in whatever fashion that actually works out to be. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that's the biggest, I don't know. I think that's the biggest advice I would give. If anybody wants more, they can call me or message me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not have to write a book about my life <laughs> lesson, although I could. <laughs> you could, you could carry. I could. Oh, I, oh, I could write quite a book, but yeah, uh, I think that's enough for now. <laughs> There'll be, um, um, like words of wisdom from oh my you know, oh my yes a book of a book of quotes from from Carrie. Um, okay, so final question: If you got to play DJ for five minutes for the whole world, no pressure, but you get to pick a song that the whole world has to listen to, what are you going to choose? Oh, so full disclosure: I am the biggest disco fan that you're going to find. This this is unexpected, but disco. I'm you know why I like it? A, I like to dance. Absolutely love to dance. B, it's happy music. Yeah. It's happy. Okay? Who doesn't want to be happy? Perfect combination. So, let's look here. Hold on. Um, let me look at my disco playlist. Yes, I have one. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so excited about this. I don't know if you caught the episode that I just recorded or just went out with Carrie Wallace, but I told her that when we all get to be together again... And we have this massive party of insurance people. Yeah. I'm bringing the disco ball. So who I knew? I got the music, so we're good. Yes, um, we're ready. My song that I think everybody in the free world would need to hear. And that's a little hard because there's a couple that they start and I'm like, boom, I'm, I'm on the floor. Uh, disco Inferno. Oh, right. By the Tramps, man. If you don't, if you don't dance to that, you're dead inside. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. I, 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 I don't even think we can be friends. <laughs> The number two song is Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Yeah. And what's my number three song? Hmm. I know you didn't ask for three, but I'm going to give it to you. That's okay. You can give three. Um, number three. Oh, ABBA. How can I not talk about ABBA? I don't know how. I, I was actually thinking that that's Yeah, what so I have an ABBA playlist, too. So I think that one would have to be... Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Dancing Queen or... Take a chance on me. He's got a good beat where you can really dance. Happen. So that's a that's a rough gig, but it would absolutely, without hesitation, be disco. And those are my choices. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. This is amazing. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play disco for the rest of the day. I, I don't know how how you to know I do. I sit here and I do my work and I got it going. I mean, yeah. I just that is my go to every single time. 
I love it. I love it. Well, <laughs> Carrie, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. Um, we will keep in touch via social Absolutely. and eventually we're all going to get back in the same room together. Yes. Thank heavens. See this massive group hug and I can't wait for it. I'm so excited to see you. Um, I'm excited to see future speaking gigs as well. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I always, I try to put it out. I'm not as, I'm not as out there with it. Like telling, I'm not like sending letters or emails to every, uh, you know, agency group or trade group. I'm not doing anything like that. I just now looking for the opportunities. So yeah, we'll, we'll hope because it's something I absolutely, besides writing, because writing is my thing. Blogging has been my thing for like 10 years. The speaking is, has become very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. And I look forward to seeing all of the amazing things that the future holds for you and your agency and yeah. And to chatting and, and seeing each other again soon. So yeah. Thank, thank you, you ma'am, so much. And we'll catch up soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate yep. the opportunity. Yes, absolutely.